let's start okay so did you find any difficulty as far as the reading of this uh, part is concerned no difficulty no i think i was all right so it was all right so did you read about the vitamins the the foods that contain it why do we need those vitamins and what will happen to our body if we have a deficiency of the vitamins uh so i read about proteins fats car carbohydrates as i did vitamin uh vitamin c d uh minerals i i did read them miss but it it'll just take me a while to like absorb the information mm. but yes okay so uh -huh. so if if a uh, someone especially a young child is deficient in vitamin d what is the disease that they are affected with yes hamza Hamza, can you hear me? Because I can't hear you. Yes, Hamza, where were you? Same thing again, Miss. That problem? Yeah, I sent you a picture on WhatsApp. It just disconnected. Oh, achha, achha, achha. it's okay. Okay, so yes, what's the disease that someone will suffer if there is vitamin D deficiency? Uh, it's called rickets. So it's basically when the bones get deformed and they become skinny. And it takes place when uh, people don't go outside and get sunshine. They don't become skinny. They become deformed and soft. Okay. Deformed. Right? Don't use the word skinny. Huh? They're soft and deformed. Since, see, bones are not supposed to be soft. They become soft because there's a deficiency of vitamin D. Because the job of vitamin D is to help calcium to be absorbed. And if calcium is not absorbed, the bones will not solidify or harden. So that's why the... Children, especially, it happens in children who suffer from vitamin D deficiency, they have soft and deformed bones. The softer they are, the more chance that they will get deformed or twisted, right? Achha, what about if anybody is deficient in iron? What will he suffer from? Uh, anemia. A anemia. I learned about Anemia. This. Yeah. So um, this is basically when there aren't enough red blood cells produced. And hence, the main function of red blood cells is to deliver oxygen. And when the oxygen isn't delivered, the tissues won't be able to function properly. Yes. Okay. And then we have, um, okay, calcium and all. Fine. Let's do some questions. And I've selected some questions for you. But of course, all of them. It won't be possible to do all of them because some topics we haven't covered as yet. So let's try to see. Yes, what could be the answer to question number one? What type of food is not digested before being absorbed by the body? 
not digested. Water. Boss. Which dietary food yes. is unlikely to be deficient in a meat-free diet? So which dietary component is unlikely to be deficient? Uh, protein. Mm, correct. Miss, which are more effective, paper two or paper four? Like theory questions or MCQs? Effective? What do you mean by effective? As in like, uh, what are it like? Which are concepts. Yeah, if I want to strengthen my concepts and beliefs and ideas, right, and help memorize stuff, then what are better, like theory questions or MCQs? Paper one, MCQs. Okay. Hmm. Yes, this one. Question 14. Poor nutrition can lead to conditions called rickets in which bones fail to develop properly. The table shows some minerals and vitamins present in poor foods. Which would be the best for a child who has rickets? So vitamin poor condition can lead to a condition called rickets in bones. Probably. So that's in vitamin D. Uh, so it's B. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Which food would be the best for a child who has rickets? Uh, miss, it's going to be B. So calcium, iron, vitamin C, and vitamin D. So that's B. This is MCQ number 14. B. Yes, correct. Hmm. 15. Which component made up most of the dry mass of a balanced diet? Which component makes up most of dry mass? Dry mass. Okay. Uh, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, right? Which components make up most of the dry mass of the balanced diet? Yes, it should be 15B. What, what do they mean by dry mass? Dry mass means just remove water from it. Hmm. Removing water from it and just looking at the dry mass. So yes, B is correct. Um, I don't get what, what do they mean by dry mass. Uh, dry mass, actually, see, dry mass gives you an accurate representation of uh, the percentage of components. Because, for example, if I'm taking carbohydrates, I might take a piece of bread. So bread also has some water in it. Some, not, I won't say <laughs> bread has lots of water, but if you just remove the water component, because meat also has water in it, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. In fact, fats, depends what kind of fat it is might be that there might be some water trapped inside the fat so <clears throat> so if we just exclude the water and we just look at the dry mass which gives us a more accurate representation of percentage of the various components of diet so in that case b should be the correct option okay Achani, this you will not be able to answer and i have one more question it's about testosterone uh it's about uh testosterone yeah Something like that. it's called That's something like that. So um, you know the, the C uh C fifty seven H ten and O six. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know how earlier you said that uh fat obviously contains more amount of energy than carbohydrates mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. greater greater what do you call glucose bonds? CH bonds. bonds. Yeah, mm -hmm. CH bonds. So it's um, gluc for the formula for glucose is B twelve um H no no C six H twelve O six right. Yeah. Then, uh, so if we look at the formula and derive it, right? So if we write C fifty seven H ten and O six, then isn't only one glucose molecule being formed? In which case? In the case of C fifty seven H ten, oh uh, sorry, H one hundred ten and O six. One glucose molecule molecule is being made. I don't get it. Wait, let me go back to my screen, and. Uh, just it. Actually, the formula that you are telling me is the formula of, if I'm not mistaken, stearic acid. Okay, so this is glucose, right? And if we look at glucose, the ratio of ratio of hydrogen and oxygen is 2 is to 1. Right? Yeah. And then we have C57, H110 uh, and O6. Is the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen 2 is to 1? No, it's not. The main difference between carbohydrates and fats is that all the similarity is that both of these are made up of CH and O, right? 
but the ratios of hydrogen and oxygen are different in case of carbs it will always be 2 is to 1 in case of hydrogen uh, in case of fats it will be a variable ratio and in fact i would say the percentage of hydrogen is much much more now since hydrogen is much much more so which is why we say that the fats have large number of ch bonds trapped in them which gives us more energy now what is your question Okay, I think I structured my question. No, my question was actually wrong. Uh, I was saying that how about we derive six um oxygen atoms, uh, twelve hydrogen atoms, and six um we call carbon atoms from C fifty seven H ten and O six, right? So we subtract mm -hmm. fifty seven, we subtract twelve from one hundred ten, and subtract six from oxygen, right? So then if we mm -hmm. add them together, we form a glucose molecule, and obviously mm -hmm. if if the remaining part would be C fifty one. Uh, H one H ninety eight and O nothing. So there would be no O partial. So I think my question is just wrong. Ha! Huh, the question was not correct actually. Yes, this another thing which I can tell you is that it's a rule inside your body that if you've taken a lot of glucose, right? Let's say I needed. I'm just you know, giving you a hypothetical situation that I needed twenty molecules of glucose. Okay, which means to generate energy or to give me ATP for my entire day. It's just a hypothetical situation, right? I needed twenty molecules of this, and I actually ate thousand molecules. My diet was rich of these molecules. So where will all the extra molecules go? There are two or three possibilities. The extra molecules, all these, will join up. They will join up with many of their own kind to give rise to glycogen in the liver. and all these extra molecules can also be converted to fats or they can also be converted to proteins this is something entirely not a part of your syllabus but just you know because you are so curious so i'm letting you know that if you have glucose in your body and if you have extra glucose it all will be converted to fat which is why which is why when uh, you know um, we read various articles and we say that people should not drink soft drinks like pepsi because one can of pepsi which is 250 ml okay it contains 8 teaspoons of sucrose 8 teaspoons okay a lot of sucrose imagine i would never even put 1 teaspoon of sucrose in my tea let alone 8 teaspoons of sucrose per 250 ml of pepsi so if i am a regular drinker of pepsi all the time with food i need a soft drink imagine how many c6h12o6 molecules i am putting into my body and where will all those molecules go or there's a limit to where you know to to which you can store it as glycogen its fate is it will be converted into fats and that's why people who actually eat a lot of junk food and drink soft drinks they are they have this belly fat and they are very obese do you get it now Yeah, so instead of being stored as glycogen in our liver and muscles, it instead gets mm. turned into fat for um like later, so we can use that energy later and then yes. it gets into our yes, body. Yes, yes. Like mm. exactly. Huh. So it's piling up and piling up and piling up, and we never end up using that energy. Exactly, and you know, I uh, personally, I think that whenever uh you are giving the opportunity to your body to convert the extra glucose molecules to fats, that opportunity should never be given actually in the first place, because those. glucose being stored as fats means that you have excess of glucose you have you should burn them instead you should go and do some heavy workout and uh, run or you know go to a gym or run on a treadmill or whatever you have to burn all those extra glucose molecules yeah okay okay so yes what could be the answer to question number 25 what is the result of that lacking iron uh Bleeding gums, poor bone healing, reducing number of red blood cells. So it's reducing number of red blood cells. Yes, twenty six. A child decided to eat only meat, oily fish, cheese, and bread, and drink only water. What nutrients would be low levels in the diet? So it would. Uh, so he'd get. Um. Vitamin. probably vitamin d it won't be vitamin d because it's fish so he will be having vitamin d he is eating meat so he will be having iron 
he is eating cheese, so he will be having calcium. So, so the vitamin. only thing which he vitamin C because he's not eating any fresh fruits and vegetables because vitamin C is found in fresh fruits and vegetables. What about question number twenty eight? A person has bleeding gums. This could be caused by lack of what nutrients? Bleeding gums, miss. Uh, it can be caused by vitamin C. C. What's the name of that disease? Of the bleeding gums, it's I think it's called uh sc scurvy. 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 Hmm. scurvy. Sure. What about this? Table shows the main contents of four meals. Which meal would be the most effective of prevention of constipation? Which meal would will be the most effective at preventing constipation? Constipation. Uh, probably twenty C C. So thirty eight carbohydrates, fats, ten protein, mm. twenty two grams of fiber. Mm. So, Miss, I have a question. Could you go back up there, please? Yeah. So, um, if we look at this question, right? Does the ratio matter? Or does the number of like um the grams of carbohydrates the fiber need to be high, or is the ratio um the, the ratio doesn't matter. They they've just given it the ratio to confuse you. Okay, so if I have like thirty eight carbohydrates, um fifty fats and sixty proteins, right? And if I have mm -hmm. uh in, instead of twenty two, I have like ninety grams of fiber. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's efficiency. Mm -hmm. And in 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 D, I have fifty grams of uh, carbohydrates. 100 grams of fats and uh, 100 grams of protein. But in the second one, so in, in D, right? So instead of 10 grams of fiber, I can have 120. So D would be greater, even if the ratio was exactly. super low. Exactly. Exactly. This is a bit blurred, this question, but still, I think I can read it. The table yeah. shows um, the vit ha, vitamin and ha, this one. Mineral salt comes to the birth of four foods, vitamin C, pro, vitamin D. Okay, which which foods would stop a person from suffering from any lack of hemoglobin and scurvy, bleeding gums? Okay, so which ones would stop them from suffering from any which is iron? So iron needs to be high. So iron needs to balance scurvy's vitamin C disease. So bleeding gums. So iron. Uh, I think it's going to be C. C. Correct. Number 36. This is the last one, and then I'm ending the class. Uh, which condition can sometimes be prevented by eating plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables? Uh, a, bleeding gums. Bleeding gums. Brittle bones, diabetes, soft bones. Bleeding gums, yes. Correct. So I think this much has been understandable. Next time, inshallah, when uh, we'll start the various parts of the digestive system, beginning from the mouth and stomach, sure. we'll try to cover as much as possible, right? And you let me know, confirm about Thursday, 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. by tomorrow. Right? Okay, miss. Okay. Allah, first. Allah, first.